What's the matter with white people? That's the provocative title of the new book from Joan Walsh, an MSNBC contributor and editor at large at Salon.com. Joan was on the show in September, but we did a second interview that focused on the demographic changes in the country that are coming faster than many white folks expected. Mitt Romney, we're talking to you. I began by telling her about a visit to Washington Watch from Gene Sperling, President Barack Obama's chief economic advisor. Gene Sperling was here, and he was talking about the jobs bill, and he was talking about infrastructure and building these various jobs. I said, Gene, okay, you want African American support. You're going to have to tell those trade unions to stop closing their doors to African Americans. Right. And so when I'm talking to uh, white colleagues or friends, I try to explain to them, you guys don't understand that when opportunities, doors are being shut and unions are providing college scholarships and benefits, yeah. things along those lines, uh, you're looking for a level of support to get it done. But the net result is going to be, hey, yeah, we'll make the phone calls, send the emails, send the faxes to get the bill passed. And then be left Did out. not benefit. Right. Right. No, that's a really important point. And I think that, you know, lots of unions have opened up and lots right. of, but the building trades are still are still one of the most high bound. Uh, but I think also with the jobs bill, I mean, we did have a, we had a policy to create jobs during the Great Depression and then the World War Two, a sad way to create mm -hmm. jobs. But World War Two lifted a lot of people out of poverty, including African-Americans. But, but it was much more effective for white people. And it's been frustrating to see in the last few years. I think the Democrats, because they got blamed for being the party of government, right. ran away from being the party of government and didn't tell their own story of, you know, as Bill Clinton did the other night at the convention, that when we're in charge, we create jobs. In this great recession, nearly a depression, I don't think there was nearly enough emphasis paid to having a jobs bill, getting it in early. I think this, that, you know, everybody agrees the stimulus did a lot. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. But if we could have gotten more infrastructure and we could have gotten more jobs, I mean, we, you know better than I do, we've got so many young men left out of this economy, right. people who aren't going to college, they're not being routed to jobs. They, the, the teen joblessness and the young 20s joblessness rate is, is a tragedy in this country, and it's going to affect those young people for their whole lives. They're not getting Getting, they're not getting on the, the first rung of the ladder, and I really wish we'd seen much more of a public works uh, push, making the unions, you know, open up and 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 help people too, um, early in early in the, the administration when maybe there was a little bit more more capital. Let's talk about the future. Uh, I have been saying for three years that we are living in the early stages of white, true white fright. What I mean by that is, 30 years ago, we saw these reports, oh, America is going to be a majority minority country. Right. That was so far away, the people said, century. whatever. Right. Now, all of a sudden, we're literally some 30 years away, a generation away. Right now, I think it's like seven states, 15 and under, it's majority minority. Right. And so I have, I have contended that all of a sudden, whites are going, oh my God, uh, this stuff is changing. Right. And what you and, it, and it, whatever you said mainstream, you really meant white. Right. And all of a sudden, you're going to have to deal with uh, inclusion. Have you gotten that same sense in terms of folks going, I don't really I'm not used to this country sort of changing and uh, my way not being the mainstream right way. well absolutely you know there were battles in the in the, at the end of the last century uh, over multicultural curriculum and and you know you had white conservatives who were really in love with the idea of e pluribus unum out of many one mm -hmm. and they felt like oh we've got separatism and identity politics what white people have to understand now is we are only one out of many if you like E pluribus unum. You also have to accept that it means we're just one group. We're not the we're not the mainstream into which everybody is expected to uh, integrate. On the other hand, I think that some of the fear some of the fear is racial. Some of the fear is th that things are things are changing economically. Maybe they mm -hmm. identify racial change with the fact that you, uh, jobs are going away, uh, family income has declined, white family income has declined in, cer in certain areas. There's more hardship among white people. And I, you know, working on social justice issues, I often say that we may have more allies. Black unemployment is higher, but there are more white people. So we've got millions more white people in poverty, millions more unemployed. Do we have to think about the way we talk 
to them and about them mm -hmm. in somewhat different ways. And I, you know, you and I have talked about this a little bit on Twitter, mm -hmm. but you know, there can be this this sort of knee jerk tendency to assume that all white working class or or white generally um, doubt about the president is is racism. Right. But the president, you know, he's done wonderful things. I support him, but he let some of us down, and economically, we didn't move as quickly as we should have. And so I, I'm, you know, often a voice, sometimes a lonely voice, mm -hmm. for saying, hey. Don't talk about people like that. Don't assume without proof right, that right. Th this is all it's about. It's just about white racism because it's, it's, it's more complicated. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I get, but last point here, I want you to respond to it. It was very interesting. I was moderating a panel uh, doing uh, Minority Week for, uh, for during an advertising week, during ad week. Right. And so I'm doing this panel, and, and all of the panelists are minority. They kept saying you know, multicultural. Then they kept saying black and Hispanic markets. I said, okay, can we just, uh, just go ahead and call the uh, mainstream market white? So it's attached and race to the market. So a white guy stands up, and he said, hey, I got a question. I was really concerned because this bus came by one day and had this ad, and it was in Spanish, and nobody in the ad looked like me. And I was unsure if the ad, if that that the product was for me. And I said, welcome to our welcome world. Welcome to our and world. And I think he's, and, and, and I wasn't, you know, trying to rip the guy, right. but I think all of a sudden he realized, wait a minute, I'm so used to watching commercials, so used to watching television anchors and reporters right. who look like me, who are white, and now all of a sudden I'm going to have to now live in a world where they're going to be black and Hispanic and Asian. They're going to be different people. And I always say that perspective is different. And I say, white America, you're going to have to get used to yeah. it. We are changing. We are changing. And there shouldn't be the assumption that because someone in power doesn't look like you, that, that they're going to treat you badly, right. you know, or that they're only going to look out for their own. And that's a little bit of the racial tension, too. And I, I've said to my white friends, well, do you think that Black people in particular are going to treat us as badly as we treated them. You know, I mean, and, and that, that was at Pat Buchanan column. That, he was like, exactly. hey, hey, black people, please, please don't do to us what you did, to, right. what we did to you. He, I mean, his, book, his, his sad last book is all like, you white liberals, you know, you're going to be in the back of the bus. He literally wrote that, you know, you support Obama, but you're going to be in the back of the bus. I'm like, oh, my God, Pat, do you really think that's what that's where we're going, that we're going to have turnaround? I mean, that's not what anything the president is doing is about, but that is the fear. Well, folks, it is an instructive book. It's called What's the Matter with White People? <laughs> Why We Long for a Golden Age that Never Was. And again, also, it's not directed at white people. I believe in books that give you that historical understanding as well. So I don't care who you are, what your ethnicity is. Get the book. John, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, John. When we come back, we'll talk to Obama 2012 pollster Cornell Belcher on how African-Americans can use these changing demographics to increase our political power.